revitalizing the overwatch 2 experience the newest season of overwatch 2 is around the corner and with it comes some exciting changes during our overwatch 2 uh what's next panel at blizzcon 2023 we shared a sneak peek at some of the philosophy guiding many of the system changes coming this year striving to make pvp gameplay more rewarding and fun and providing a greater transparency for players in game we are introducing major changes to the competitive and the new season from a new progression system to an all new skill tier above grandmaster as well as major gameplay changes to combat and hero survivability updating the competitive experience we've heard your feedback on the competitive play over the last eight seasons and we have some big updates coming that will give you the opportunity to build on your skills and see how you progress through the competitive ranks we built a better system that's more accurate while also helping convey the meaning behind the mathematical complexity of a modern matchmaker and bring clear insights about what impacts your rank in every match. Seeing how and why your rank changes. Uh, one piece of feedback we heard is that just knowing your rank doesn't say anything about why your rank went up or down. Competitive updates originally worked to provide updates that reflected your growth as a player across multiple matches but with the goal to provide greater transparency in each individual match. Uh, we're going back to updating your rank after every match and showing how much progress you gain or lose between each skill division. That's good. Being able to see your rank after every game, I feel like is so much fucking better than every five wins or 15 losses. I think that's really stupid. Like having having them sh like hide your rank until you meet a threshold for them to show your rank is really fucking just dumb. I don't know why they went that route, but that's that. The, what I feel like they're doing is they're 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 trying to baby. I I use this a lot. They're trying to baby this game a lot. They're trying to hide you guys from or the players from getting hurt. Like if you see your rank go down because you lost, well you fucking lost. It should be like that. Your rank is not gonna go up. Yeah, they're like, they're trying to hold your hand. They're trying to babysit, they're trying to babysit you through all this fucking shit. And you shouldn't. They shouldn't. We're also displaying modifiers that affected your last match below the rank progression bar. Some modifiers help provide transparency in the matchmaking for each match. Like getting a boost when you defeat a team that was more favored to win. While other modifiers show if your rank is calibrating. Like going on a huge win streak, proving uh, you belong in a higher rank. Feedback is a driving force behind these changes, and we want to hear your thoughts on competitive play now that you have more context for each game. Oh, so this is the rank information. This is what you're going to see, uh, I'm pretty sure, after matches. So, uh, rank progress... Uh, if you guys play Valorant, I'm pretty sure it's like that. It says 0 R. I don't know what they use. RR or something? So it's like, it's going to be 0, and this is going to be 100. Once you reach, if you go below 0, you're going to derank. If you go above 100, you're going to, like, rank up. I think it's RR, right? Yeah. In 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 does anyone here play Valorant? If you if you are at let's say two RR and then you lose a game, do you go down that rank or does it go from two to zero and then if you lose another one then you D rank? Like zero then D rank? Okay, so it gives you it gives you that extra little uh it gives you that extra little um you know, hey, you didn't D rank just yet. Yeah, it's like a little buffer. But if you reach a hundred, you rank up, right? It's like a it's like a little advantage for you to not derank. Okay, that makes a that may, that's a little cool, I guess. I, I guess that's 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 fine. Uh, this progress bar shows you how much your rank has increased or decreased as a result of a match. The bigger the highlighted section, the more rank was gained or lost. The reason why more rank might have been gained or lost are explained in the modifiers below. So these are the modifiers, chat. So win streak, bonus for a high win rate. Uh, loss streak. Penalty for a high loss, loss rate. Holy oh, shit. Damn. Uh, calibration. Your rank is uncertain. Uh, uphill batter, uh, batter, battle. Sorry, chat. Holy shit. I don't even know what's going on. Sorry, Florida. I'm just gonna blame it on Florida. You weren't favored, but you won. Reversal. You were favored, and you lost. Volatile. You lost calibration matches after ranking up uh consolation you were favored and you lost expected you were favored and you won wait you're gonna get penalized if you were expected to win and but you won 
That's just that's just a weird modifier. Expected. You were favored to win and you won, so it goes down. You were favored and you lost, so you goes up. You gain less. You were favored and you won, so you gain less. Ah, okay, okay, that makes a little sense. Uh oh, uh oh. Don't tell me. Wait, what is going on here? Uh oh. They're bringing back placements, chat. They're bringing back placements. Bring a fresh start with placement matches and rank resets. With both the changes to competitive play and broader changes to gameplay starting the season, we feel like it's a perfect opportunity for everyone to start as fresh as wait to start fresh. So it sounds like a it sounds like a whole rank reset for everyone to start fresh as they compete on the ranked leaderboards. To accomplish this, we're reintroducing placement matches and resetting everyone's competitive skill rank. So they're resetting everyone's SR, but they're not resetting everyone's MMR. It's two completely different things, chat. Your skill rank is what you see. Your MMR is what you don't see. And what your skill rank is trying to catch up to where your MMR is. That's why you go up or down. Then they remove MMR. I don't think they ever remove MMR. I could be wrong. Your journey to the top begins with 10 all new placement matches. Holy shit, 10. With everyone's rank being reset, these 10 placement matches provides you with high stakes opportunity to make big gains in determining your new starting rank. As you progress through placement matches, there will be a predicted starting rank after each match. You'll only have one chance this year to run your placement matches, so pick your best heroes and stay hydrated because these games count for a lot. Win, loss, win, loss, win, win, tie, win. Predicted rank, gold one. Okay, okay. 10 points, wait, what do you mean 10 points for a win? Are you talking about this thing up here? This thing up here, this, this victory plus 10? That's your, that's not your points. That's your, that's like for golden weapons. That's, that's your competitive points. For you to buy golden or the new emerald of weapons. Woo, emerald. Oh, Jade, sorry, it's Jade. My bad, chat. Ooh. Uh, rise up to the rank of champion. So how high can you go? We're introducing the ultimate rank champion. This is the most prestigious tier above Grandmaster. Intended to show who is the best among the most skilled players in the game. Even with the boosts that placement matches can provide, top ranking players will still need to win a lot of games to reach champion one and prove that they are the best of the best. This is the most exclusive rank in the history of Overwatch. And we're on the edge of our seats to see who will achieve such heights in Season 9 and beyond. That's going to be interesting, bro. Ooh, they, they even use the word exclusive. This is the most exclusive rank in the history of Overwatch. And I'm going to be honest with you, GM used to feel like that. But then they started allowing anyone and their fucking, like, mom, like, allowed in GM. Yeah, bro, like, I, like, GM used to be a really fucking high, you know, SR, but now it's like they're letting, no offense, diamonds and, like, golds in the GM, and it's, it's weird. Yeah. Anyways. Anyways, the one good thing that I have to say is that everyone that paid to get boosted or paid for, like, their account, well, they're gonna have to spend more money. W. Uh, new competitive rewards and jade weapons. Season 9 introducing- oh, here, let me go down here. Season 9 introduces jade weapon variants. Unlockable with 2024 competitive points. Wait, I can't use my old points? Wait a minute, wait a minute. I can't use my old points? Brother! 23,300, bro! I can unlock, like, the next 10 jade weapons! Nah, bro, I- What do you mean, new? I can't use my points for gold! Earning Jade Weapon Variants will reflect your ded dedication to the competitive play in 2024, not just your highest rank achieved. Luckily, these new Jade Weapon Variants will uh, not be as exclusive as the champion's rank, uh, champion rank. You will progress toward earning competitive points just by playing the game mode, with more prog uh, progress granted towards wins. Competitive points earned for winning and drawing a match have been rebalanced around this new progression system which should make every match feel rewarding regardless of the outcome. Unlocking Jade Weapons. Unlock a Jade Weapon when you earn 3,000 competitive points. So it's the same as gold, 3,000. 
and I'm pretty sure there are people out there who don't have all the gold weapons, so you're probably either going to have the choice to pick between Jade and gold, I'm guessing. I don't know. Legacy, competitive points, and golden weapons. Through the end of Season 8, players can still earn competitive points towards unlocking gold weapon variants. When Season 9 starts, your previously earned competitive points will be converted to legacy... Com uh, what do you call it? Competitive points. Legacy competitive points? Your com your com uh, blah, blah, blah. Dude, your competitive points from Season 8 are now converted to legacy competitive points. I'm guessing that's the new thing. Competitive. Ah, I can't even talk. You'll still be able to use legacy competitive points to unlock golden weapon variants, but the way you receive legacy com uh, competitive points will change. Once the 2024 competitive year closes, any leftover 2024 competitive points will automatically be converted and added to your legacy uh, competitive points, which can be used to unlock golden weapon variants. Oh. End of the year, com your 2024 competitive points are converted to legacy competitive points. Yeah, I don't, I don't understand. Why can't you just keep, why can't you just keep the competitive points be competitive points? And once you reach three thousand, you could buy either jade or you could buy the gold, or make it so you have to buy the gold first, then you have to buy the jade after. I've, you know what I mean? I feel like there's there's so many other things that you could do. Uh, I don't, I don't know. Uh, last chance to claim end of the season bonuses. Starting in Season 9, competitive changes that grant bonus competitive points are also changing. Season 8 will be the last season to claim end of the season competitive challenges for Season 1 through 7. Log in before the end of the end of Season 8 to grab any rewards from Season 7 or earlier that you haven't claimed yet. Once Season 9 begins, you'll, you will be unable to receive past competitive points from completed competitive challenges from Season 7 or earlier. You still be able to claim your Season 8 rewards during Season 9, but you must log in to receive that bonus before the end of Season 9. Yeah, I feel like- I feel like Blizzard is adding way too fucking much and should just simplify everything. Like you said, there's coins, and there's Legacy coins, there's Overwatch League tokens, there's comp points, there's Legacy comp points, there's... There's just- there's just too much, I feel like. Uh, introducing changes to the core gameplay. Beyond the competitive rework, Season 9 features major changes to the fundamentals of Overwatch 2 gameplay that affect every hero. We've heard the community feedback around some gameplay pain points, and develop changes to the core gameplay with these goals in mind. Deliver a more consistent feel to the firing and landing your shots on your opponents. Lessen the impact of burst damage to allow greater counterplay. And adjust where in-game healing and damage are effective to reduce stagnant team fights. Uh, all of these changes have been designed to work in the combination to balance each other out. And we're excited for you to get in-game and experience them all at once. Yeah, um, I'm scared about these changes yet. I, I don't know yet. Making your shots feel good to hit. I feel like they're gonna- I feel like they're gonna make all the hitboxes a little bigger, or like, the projectile hitbox is bigger, so... I feel like they're gonna be babysitting this game, chat. Instead of making it competitive, it's gonna be more casual, dude. One of our main goals with these adjustments is to make firing your weapons and abilities feel more consistent without impacting the time to eliminate a target and without removing the overall feel of gameplay we all know and love. When examining how burst damage values have changed over time, we found that in most cases, they have gone down in raw value. Though that may not necessarily mean that they become weaker relative to other changes. The 5v5 environment and the new heroes of Overwatch 2 certainly factor into the perspective. Yeah, the new heroes of Overwatch 2. That's because that's because the new heroes of Overwatch 2 all have like fucking six characters into one. It's really stupid, by the way. Haha, <laughs> smile. But it's often overlooked that the players' bases uh sorry, the players' bases average skill level, game knowledge, and pace of the gameplay are relatively higher now than when we first like, game uh, launched. Yeah, whatever. Oh, projectile size changes. Oh, like, who would have thought, chat? So you get point... Oh, hold up. Can you guys even read that? Plus 0 0.005 meters for hit scan projectiles with a high rate of fire or spread. Tracers, pulse pistols, or reapers, hellfire shotguns. That's not that big point. I mean, 0 0.08 meters for hit scan projectiles that are more precise. Cassidy's Peacekeeper or Soldier 76 Heavy Pulse Rifle. I really want to know. I mean, we're just looking at numbers, but I really want to know how much bigger that actually is. 
0.05 meters for travel time projectiles that are sh that are shotguns or have a very high rate of fire. Roadhog scrap gun or Amatra's void accelerator. Uh, 0.10 meters for travel time projectile with a speed greater than 50 meters per second. Zenyatta's orb, uh, destruction orb. 0.15 meters for travel time projectile with a speed less than or equal to 50 meters per second. Farah's rocket launcher. Very large projectiles with a base size greater than 0.5 meters have been excluded from the increases. Orisa's energy javelin or Reinhardt's fire strike. But 0 0.05 is a lorry? But her hitbox? I have to I have to look at that chat. When it comes to aiming as mechanicals as a mechanical skill requirement, even the players with excellent aim often mention how it can feel random whether a shot hits or not. Due largely in the part to the whip speed movement acceleration heroes have when changing directions. Combined with all of the dashing, leaping, teleporting abilities, hitting your target can be very difficult. No oh, man. They're going to make it easier, dude. Crisp, responsive movement is important to the core gameplay feel, so we wouldn't want to just slow down player movement. Instead, we're improving hit consistency by making both damage dealing hit scan and travel time projectiles larger. I don't agree with that. I think this is a very, very... Dude, m m this feels like... This, this feels like a very stupid change. I feel like... Heroes that have weapons or abilities that don't benefit from any projectile si uh, size changes will receive additional balance changes. However, we don't want to make too many hero adjustments before getting a better understanding uh, of the effects from these initial changes. So tune in for more individual heroes in the future updates. Well, I, the only thing I have to say is that it's very stupid to change the projectile sizes or the, 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 just the hitbox size in general. This isn't Counter-Strike or like games like that or Valorant where all the characters have the same hitbox. It's different. Like Ana has a different hitbox than Tracer and Tracer has a different hitbox than like... Like Reinhardt. Everything's just different. Adjusting health pools to balance gameplay. Uh, Since we're increasing the average accuracy of nearly all heroes and want to keep the time to kill similar, we're also increasing everyone's health, everyone's maximum health. We've also, uh, we already balanced the damage values, damage boosts, critical damage breakpoints, and other factors around 200 to 250 HP heroes, so the new health ends up requiring at least one more hit from most heroes to eliminate an enemy. All 100 to 175 HP heroes will have their health increased by 25. All 200 to 300 HP heroes will have all their health increased by 50. And all 300 HP targets, which are mostly tanks, will have an increased health of 75 to 100. 250 HP Zenyatta, 350 HP Bastion, 175 HP Tracer. But shots are but but you're gonna you guys also have to realize that shots are gonna be a little easier to hit now. Cassidy's gonna have 220 uh, 275. Zen uh Symmetra's gonna have 275. 300 HP May. That's just crazy, dude. I I don't think I think all I'm saying and to each their own but to balance a game i feel like increasing the health of characters is a very lazy way to balance a game that's all i'm gonna say especially with also making shots easier to land no offense mm, i think it's just very lazy uh giving more self-reliance in team fights we also want to make sure that the flow of the game or the flow of the team fight doesn't take away from individual player decisions that can determine the outcome of a match tanks already have a significant role in each team fight as they are often the ones to take space and determine where the fight uh, each fight takes place whereas we want to enable more critical decision making amongst the damage and support roles brother you don't need to make 
You, you don't need to enable fucking supports when they have characters like Kiri that are already on the flank. And if you push the Kiri, it's just going to two-tap you or throw Suzu. Or what happens when they throw down their Suzu? Oh, don't forget, they have a teleport as well. Stupid, dude. Sorry. The changes to projectile size and health pools effectively reduce the impact of burst damage and tones down the rel uh, relative strength of healing. Meaning it will take longer to heal someone from 1 HP to full health. To ease the friction of an increased time to fully heal allies out of combat and enable support players to make more uh, informed decisions on who to heal, everyone can now regenerate health passively at a rate of 20 healing per second after 5 seconds of not taking damage. And the support roll passive heal has been adjusted to 2.5 seconds. See, this is my take on this. This is my take on this. Is there anyone here that plays World of Warcraft that has been playing World of Warcraft for a while? I used to play WoW, and I loved Vanilla WoW. Vanilla WoW was so fucking fun. But the reason why WoW doesn't interest me anymore, other than it's an MMO and MMOs suck the fucking living life out of you, is that back then, and you guys can also agree with me if you want, back then your healers actually had to heal your damage players who are low health had to kite or run away or somehow find healing it was challenging but now world of warcraft every single fucking character has an ability to self-heal or self-sustain and it's so stupid dude i'm sorry but a tank should not be able to fucking self-heal a dps should not be able to self-heal it's stupid you should have to rely on your healers as a team to win or for them to do their job. It shouldn't, you're, they're just making, all this is telling me is that you don't have to rely on your supports anymore because now your supports can fucking mo focus more on damage. It's stupid. That's, it's just a stupid idea. If this is not, this is, if this is turning more casual and turning more into a, not even team, team based game anymore, man. I just, I just don't agree with the, the, like, what Blizzard does. An increased health pools and weakened burst of damage means that heroes live longer and team fights will take longer to conclude. To combat some of the potentially extreme situations there, we're also introducing a new damage passive, empowering them to more easily fulfill their role in securing eliminations, reduce in, in combat healing, and potentially add an additional strategic layer to focus firing targets new roll passives chat i think they should get rid of all roll passives to be, on be honest i think roll passives is a really fucking dumb thing at the begin with uh all heroes passive passively regenerate 20 health per second on on not taking damage for five seconds new damage roll passive dealing damage reduces the target's healing received by 20 percent so I'm guessing DPS players will no longer what what's the what's the passive right now? You get to reload faster or some shit when you get an elimination? You used to be able to move faster, but I think they removed the moving faster, right? You just reload faster. So they're taking out reloading and they're adding you nerf healing by 20%. Updated support roll passive will now begin regenerating health after 2.5 seconds. Yeah, Ash's Dynamite is going to be... Big AoE abilities are going to go crazy. Ash's Dynamite, uh, all that stuff. Tank Roll Passive. Reduces knockback received. Less ult ultimate charge generated by healing and damage received. And increased health and roll queue game modes. Okay, that's basically... That sounds like exactly the same, right? Seems like exactly the same. At its core, Overwatch 2 is a competitive game. <laughs> is it? Seems like it's turning casual. Uh, so it's important for the core game, uh, the core systems and competitive systems to be as intuitive and accessible as possible. In addition to these core system changes, we're also introducing reworks to Farah and Junkertown, uh, which we'll go into a later. We'll, we'll go into a later blog. For now, let us know what you think when Overwatch 2 Season 9 Champions launches February 13th. I'm going to be honest with you, most of the changes sound good, but some of the other changes that I kind of went on a rant on scare me. I'm scared, chat. Can you guys hold me? I'm scared. I think the game that we all know and love is uh is disappearing. 
it's going the it's going the World of Warcraft route. It's it's becoming I don't know. I don't want to say I don't want to judge something based off something I read. I I would rather try it and experience it myself. Hell, I could be I could be wrong about this, but it seems like it's I don't know, man. Like I said, you have to try things once, man. You can't look at something or read something and be like, "Ew, I haven't." That's like that's like watching a streamer. And I, I know this is true because I've heard it several times. It's like watching a streamer you guys don't know. Pretend it's me. You guys watch a clip of me doing something stupid. And you guys are like, oh, this guy's trash. This guy's not a good player or he's toxic. But you come to my stream and it's completely not like that. You can't judge something off like reading it or I guess like 10 seconds of it. That's that's all I'm saying. I do think on 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 having a, a PTR server that we can actually try these changes on would actually be really helpful, like a like what they used to have. Uh, but I don't know why they don't do that anymore. Um, some of the changes are good though. Some of the changes I'm scared about. That's all I'm gonna say. Okay, friends, YouTube thinks you might like this next video, so let me know if they're right.